now, Kaz Tech. Number 25, Mike Weber, with a leap into the end zone. Mike Weber came here as a freshman. He didn't get an opportunity to play because he had some knee problems. And it was bothering him a lot. But once he got an opportunity to start practicing, he had a good year running track. He had a good year lifting weights. And he came back his sophomore year. And we had a lot of, we kept a lot of patience with him. When the playoff season came, we let him loose. And he was still he was supposed to do. He became a great inside, outside threat for us. He became a great pass receiver. And he, he was a most important thing was that Mike Weber was the back that helped move the offense. He helped us control the tempo of the team because he can catch passes and he can run the ball. Yeah. I've heard of Mike when Mike Weber came to Castag coming in as a freshman. Uh, we heard about him from Pal and heard he was pretty good. We anticipated him coming in as a freshman and starting being a running back. He got hurt right before the season started at the end of July. He hurt his knee, so he, he didn't play for us that year. Unfortunately, we struggled with our running game. He would, would have been our starter running back that year. Uh, we did end up winning the state title with, with a running back by Quinn kind of, kind of deal. This sophomore year, he kind of came in, he kind of was, I think he hurt his hamstring for the first part of the year, and we held him out. But then we, once we started playing him, and I want to say game three or four, he, he took over and pretty much led us to a back-to-back -back championship. He was the driving force leading into the back-to-back -back championship. Yeah, Mikey's sophomore year in the state championship, I could see his, his uh, performance just because I seen that performance when he was in Little League. When he was in Little League at Fort Field, he dominated. So to go to high school, it was pretty much he was already prepared to dominate as well. So you say, the first time I heard about Mike Weber, I think Mike Weber was in the seventh grade. Uh, you know, he was already kind of legendary in, 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 in the little league. He was, uh, he played everything though. He wasn't just, he wasn't running back then, he was a quarterback. But he was, the, he was pretty good. I had heard he was the best player, but I didn't get a chance to see him until the championship game. Down in Ford Field, you know, he put on the show. I mean, they were undefeated. I think the Tigers were undefeated. And uh, a lot of the kids that he's battling against from East English was out on the field uh, against him. He played quarterback. I think he, I know he scored five touchdowns. I think he threw three and ran two, but he scored five touchdowns. Like, I was like, whoa, like, hey, this kid's really amazing. Like. He, he, on a little league level, he was, there, was, there was no one close to Mike, to me. You know, John Kelly was pretty good, and uh, the kid over at Western was pretty good. But they were there, they were there. Romello, Romello was pretty good, but Mike, he hands down, was the best player. Not just running back, he's the best player in little league. And, and pal, that's saying a lot. That's saying a lot. Uh, if Mike Weber played quarterback for us as a freshman, I think he'd be the best quarterback in the state. Like he's got, his arm is like probably the strongest arm on the team. He can, the end he can kick, probably about a 45 yard field goal. Like when it comes to football, the, the kid is like really, really talented. When he was a freshman before he uh, hurt his knee that summer, he's gonna be the starting slot receiver 
we already had a running back coming back, but he was he had the best hands on the team. So he just and that's just these they, these aren't like made up stories. Like the kid is just really that good. Like we don't throw him the ball a lot, but he used to have like the best hands on the team. You know, so the kid is just super talented. Super talented. has seen in a long time. Um, tough runner, hard to tackle him. You can't tackle him, arm tackle him. Um, he had great deceptive speed. He should be a good fit at Michigan or what they run, the post out offense. Um, they like them big backs and Mike is definitely what they need. The best backs, he's definitely the best back in the state. 
ever since I've been covering football, I've never seen, maybe Dennis Northfleet, but they're different, two different style of runners. And ever since I've been covering the PSL, I've never seen anybody as good as Mike Weber. And, you know, he's like, he comes around every, like once in a lifetime. Uh, it'll be a while for you to see someone like Mike Weber again. Considered the best running back in the state of Michigan, just through his work ethic, his, his development as a kid, as a youth, he was dominant. He dominated in youth football. He dominated in high school. And in high school, you could just see him as one of the best. What he did as a youth, just some teaching, and some coaching, and his his persona to want to be the best and want to be the best player on the field. It has shown and it has paid off for him. Definitely, probably one of the best within the last. 20 years. I mean, you still have had some really great backs, you know, within the last 20, but Mikey's up there. I, I won't say that he's the best, but he's definitely up there. And as far as that cast, we've had some really good backs, but yeah, Mikey's the best. Terry Jones was really good, but Mikey is the best. And I wasn't here when uh, Cortez was here, but I know that Cortez was really good as well. He went to Indiana. So, yeah, but I think Mikey, Mikey's the best back that I've had. Since I've been in Cats, Mikey is the best running back that we've had. Yeah, no doubt. Number uh, two, like you talk about these last few playoff games against our toughest opponents. You know, we play against a lot of guys out in the suburbs that are pretty good. But talent-wise, you know, the, the best talent we play against at Cass is definitely in the city of Detroit. So, you know, our two rival schools, you know, East Lafayette, they're most definitely our number one rival. But Coach Rod Oden does such a really great job over there at East English. Formerly, he was at Crockett. You know, he whatever, whatever he's teaching over there, he teaches physical, tough football. And, and that's when I was most proud of Mikey. When we played against East English, they were really bringing it. They were, they were old school in it. They were coming, throwing their bodies in there hard for four quarters, for four quarters. And knowing that he was already banged up before we went into the game, because I think he had like 40 carries against Mumford, and there was a lot of inside zone stuff, and they were determined to shut him down and. He eventually got going and, and had a good game, but as as he goes, we go. You know, and he knew he had to suck it up. His heart was like what separates him to me, because folks don't know. I mean, Mikey's got, you know, his knees, his knees banged up, his toes banged up, his ankles banged up, his wrist is banged up. You know, Welch is always telling him, back's got to be able to play through pain. He's like, there's a difference between being hurt and being injured. He's like, you know, there's a difference, you know, and I think in years previous, because we had so many other backs, Mikey really didn't understand the full extent of what being a workload running back was. You know, he used to always complain, I want more carries, I want more carries, but we had two other Division One running backs, so Mikey was only getting maybe 11 to 15 carries a game. The other guys would get eight, nine. So he wasn't getting the whole brunt of the work. Now he, he's starting to understand, but the best thing about him, he's starting he started to play smarter. You know, he, he's a guy, he's a kid who loves contact. He told me his dad told him, you know, you never run out of bodies. You never run out of bodies. That last guy, you make him feel it. So that was Mikey's mindset, like, since he's been here. This year, since he's been hurt, well, just been telling me, like, look, man, you know, no one questions your heart. He's like, we, we try to play 14 weeks. If we, in order for us to play 14 weeks, you gotta make it through 14 weeks. So some of these hits, you need to start getting knocked out. Coming right back every week. After the month of game, he the ball 30 times, carried the team in his back. He came back in the East England, first round of the playoff game. Fourth quarter, we started giving him the ball, he just took it over. Took the whole game. We 
down 12 0. Mike Weber scored three touchdowns. It was right there to send us to the uh, city championship, which Mike Weber then took over the city championship game and had runs over 50, 60, screen plays over 80 yards. He was just dominant, and he shows why he is Mike Weber, a dominant running back. It's PSL final, the PSL championship game at Ford Field this past Friday against Detroit King. Both teams are 8-0. Um, you know, that's showtime for him. Uh, he basically was a man among boys and uh, just watching the film and seeing him on the field and what he was doing against a, a pretty very good King defense, he made them look like, like they were a little bit, they couldn't stop them.
what it means to break that and what how to really uphold with expectations of people to sleep. I think that um, Mike really did a great job. So he ran the ball inside, outside, vertical field, everything. I just think it was a real good show because he did what it takes to win. And he carried the ball 33 times. 33 times for him about the yard. Big chunk. So I just hope that you just keep this one there. It takes a lot to do that type of things. It takes a lot of great to be that type of person. And it really make yourself become a really couple steps in front of people. Really just become great and you have to want to do great things. So he has to keep practicing hard, keep staying humble. He will have more days like this. So I can see him with that. Um, today is just one day. You more than half Best, uh goal, but at the same time, what we've been preaching with each other is, you know, as far as God's concerned, you can never ask for too much, mm -hmm. you know, because he's responsible of all things, and, uh, and Lord behold, you know, he's, he's had the opportunity to be able to have good blocking, and, uh, <laughs> be able to really accomplish his goals every day. It's, it's overwhelming as far as the expectations that we set to be able to reach those goals. It's, it's, it's words can't describe it.
better than us. That interception for a touchdown was such a big play. That, that botched punt, you know, that they turned into three points, we got to keep them off the scoreboard. You go down and you go into halftime, you down three. So you, you put the offense in a, in a situation where they press and press and press. And, you know, and it wasn't like, you know, it was a cat and mouse game the whole game with me and the offensive coordinator. You know, a lot of the things that they normally would do, you know, they didn't do and they it just, I, I got, we got to make more plays. I got to, you know, we got to get, we got to force turnovers and, and turn them into points. Their defense first points a turnover and turns it into points. So, you know. On the controversial play towards the end of the game where the, it seemed like the Celine player was about to get the ball, the Cavs player knocked him out the way and grabbed the ball in the end zone. Do you think that was a touchdown or? If the ref, call, if the ref said that it was not a touchdown, then I'm going to go with the ref. The ref referees from both sides. That, that one play, everybody wants to jump to one play. One play never makes or breaks a game. There was, there was 60 snaps for both teams on offense, and that one play shouldn't have determined the outcome of the game. So, you know, we gotta make more, we gotta make more plays. Uh, I know he's pretty hurt because he's so competitive. And uh, he's one of the type of kids that, that's gonna do anything in his power to, to not lose. You know, it's gonna be a life lesson learn for him and hopefully it will uh, help him prosper when he turn the page and uh, start playing college football. Okay, um, they said he got 100 yards. Um, it was a tough 100 yards today. Celine really, they wasn't really buying it. They wasn't going to let him just run all over the field. I noticed even though at the half he took a real big shot, but he showed his strength to come on back. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I was, I was kind of concerned about, about the injury early, you know, uh, we didn't know specifically what the problem was, but uh, once he said he was fine, I knew you had to uh, basically uh, carry him off the field. If he can get up and walk, he's going to play. You got to drag him off the field. Well, you know, I passed the torch last week when he had that big game uh, against uh, Chippewas. You know, I always told him that, you know, you can always get better, get better, get better. Uh, Mike, Mike didn't let anyone down. You know, all his fans, friends, and family, he played his heart out. Not only for himself, but not to let us down. So, that's pretty much, you know, Mike, Mike is going better. How about Mike? He's the best player in the state. They did a hell of a job against him. I wish he was, you know, everybody knows he's pretty banged up. And that right before halftime, that number, I think it was 81, whoever the defense man was. Gave, that got him in the reels pretty good. I didn't think he was going to play in the second half. You know, but you can't win a championship with one, you know, with one guy, not even Mike Weber. I mean, the offensive line was doing a good job. Everybody did a good job, man. They just, they, they, they were better than us today. One more thing to finish off the career of Mike Weber. What you think? You, you think how? he's the best ever to come through Cass and one of the best ever to play in the city of Detroit. What about I, I maybe one of the best in the state. That's what I think, you know, just personally. They say he got 100 yards. Did, did you know he got 100, 100 yards? It was a tough 100 if he did. Because they, they, they did a good job on him. They did a good job. They had a good game plan. 